So these are some of the benefits. If you ask me personally, this is more fun also. What are the benefits of doing marketing in this way? Some of them, we already talked about it. One is we can uh, prove our hypothesis being right or wrong. So we can design those experiments, short burst, shorter experiments that will prove whether we are on the right track or not. If we made wrong assumptions, all we are doing is losing maybe two weeks worth of effort. So it gives you that quick course correction, if you want to call it, right? You are not spending millions of dollars and then finding out, oh, the campaign tanked. No, <laughs> right? So, so you, are, you, are, you are doing that in shorter bursts. So it, it gives you that uh, confirmation, number one. Number two, we can course correct it very quickly. Number three, it's highly collaborative. What that means is the, the campaign that we create, the product we create in general, they are more robust because we, we have inputs from all different aspects, right? Not just marketing, but we have marketing, we have customer representatives, we have finance, we have the cultural aspect. So, so your product would be more robust. Your, your campaign would be widely accepted, I would say. We talk about the, the visibility, the transparency that's value add for our stakeholders. We can also prioritize things to maximize the value that we create. So that's the other piece. If, if we go back to those uh, personas that I mentioned earlier, Mary is that 50 plus and Ishan is 20 year old kid. We want to go to both the markets. We want to address both the market segments. But we may decide, hey, you know, there is more money with Mary than Ishan. So let's focus on that segment. Let's address the functionality that Mary would want. Let's create a campaign that will, that will appeal to more of these Marys than the Ishan. So you are making those conscious decisions as to where we can create the most value for us, for our customers. And we do this prioritization constantly. You are also going in, uh, remember I mentioned you want to identify what are your goals and outcomes. So along with that, you want to also identify as to what are the data points that we are going to collect so that we can measure success. So I'm creating campaign and all I care about is getting to more people. So in that case, I'll say, okay, how many people have clicked on this campaign? That's the only measurement I care about for now. Once we have done that, we can kind of, again, refine it incrementally that, okay, now that we have reached so many people, now my focus is shifting. Now I want to measure how many people are really signing up to bringing their fund to us, right? So now I'm changing my measurements also, which is fine, but we are doing that intentionally. The other benefit, as we said, it allows us to tweak our campaigns, right? So it gives you the ability to adapt to the changing needs, change in the marketplace as well. The biggest thing I would say, the biggest benefit is that it gives you a competitive advantage. Competitive advantage over other marketing firms, let's say, who are working on a campaign for six months and then they come out with something versus we are churning out something every two weeks. It's good for your customer. It's good for you as an organization. So the next question is, how do we get started? We have a 12 week launch plan. So we can take a marketing team or teams, like if you have multiple teams, take them through 12 week program to launch that agile journey. So when we say 12 week, again, you know, we, we go with uh, two week increments. So that essentially means you have six sprint. The first sprint is more about kind of setting up the stage. Setting up the stage as in, you know, how are we going to work together, for example? What are the outcomes we want from this 12 week, uh, let's call it pilot. So we identify those outcomes we are looking for. We identify as to how we will work on this. 
we'll uh, also create a high level plan for these uh, 12 weeks as to what we want to achieve and how are we going to achieve that. So we create a high level roadmap of uh, what we are going to do. So all that will be discussed in that uh, sprint zero, what we call sprint zero. So that's the week one, week two. So kind of getting aligned, getting ready in terms of, uh, hey, do we need any technology? Hey, uh, let, let's set up a, a room where we are going to meet if it was in person. We are doing remote, then we'll decide, okay, how, how often we are going to meet in a day, uh, what time we will meet and things like that for all that ongoing collaboration. So that's, that's basically about it as to aligning, getting aligned and getting ready to start this journey. The sprint one is uh, now we are going to start actually working on it. So sprint zero, we would have done a high level roadmap. As part of that roadmap, we will also have identified the priorities. So uh, as part of that priority, we may have decided, hey, instead of trying to tackle big things, let's tackle small things and get those early wins. Right? So we would have identified those early wins. We will work on those early wins in this sprint one. So achieving some initial success. Again, by end of week four, we are going to go in front of the customers and show whatever we have done. It could be a whiteboard discussion. It could be a uh, wireframe campaign that we have created. So then, because we are doing this at the end of week four, we are showing the campaigns, we are getting that feedback. So we are going to adjust our next few iterations based on that feedback. So the feedback may be, hey, you guys are on the right track, continue putting more details to this camp. Or feedback may be, hey, you're on completely wrong track, let's roll back, let's not focus on Mary, let's focus on Ishan. But whatever it is, we got the feedback and either it solidifies our approach or it forces us to adjust. So we are going to adjust our uh, approach and adjust the next couple of iterations. So remember, when we did the sprint zero, we would have created a high level plan for the 12 weeks. Now we are going to go to that board again and reshuffle some of those stickies if you visualize a board with those stickies. So that's the adjustment we would be doing. We will also do a retrospective as a team as to, hey, the last four weeks that we did, is it working? What do we need to change? Things like that. So the next few weeks, like uh, week seven, week eight, which would be sprint three and then sprint four, would be continuing on the next iteration of that campaign. So we would be there through these 12 weeks with you as your agile coaches. This is sprint three and sprint four is also the time when we will introduce some advanced topics. So first sprint zero was getting ready. Sprint one and two kind of look at it as getting your feet wet, right? You are kind of dabbling into it. Now we are saying, okay, now we are going to go full force and we are going to jump right in. No more kind of dabbling, let's just jump in the pool. So sprint three and sprint four, we will introduce some advanced topics. So one of the item we talk about is whip limits. So work in progress limits. The initial, initial temptation could be that, hey, why not just create work on three different campaigns to address three different personas. But by doing multiple, Multiple campaigns, what we are doing is stretching ourselves way too thin. What that means is when I go to sprint three, uh, at the end of the sprint three, I may still be saying, hey, we are working on these three campaigns, but nothing to show you. Versus if we if we limit and say, hey, you focus on just one campaign at a time, or maybe two campaigns at a time, uh, chances, there are higher chances that end of the sprint three, I will have something to show them. So we start introducing and start practicing those advanced topics. 
this is also where we start talking about different prioritization techniques. Just to give you a few names, so we talk about effort versus value quadrant. So we identify four different quadrants. There's a high value, high cost, low value, low cost, and somewhere in between. There is another one called, called a weighted shortest job first. Uh, this is a kind of technical term, but we can definitely use that for marketing also. And it's essentially, it's basically talking about that, identify the value of doing a particular campaign, and then also look at the cost of doing it. Is it easier to do it or is it going to be more, very expensive? You have to marry those two and use that to make those priority decisions. The other one is digging out gold, as we call it. So we look at those four quadrants and let's say we identify items which are high value, high cost. So if you ask me, I want to go after the high value items, but then it's high cost also. So then we start looking at those high value, high cost items and start try to identify what is the gold in it. So that's what I mean when I say digging out gold. So essentially, Sprint 3, Sprint 4 are introducing more of those advanced topics. And then last sprint would be kind of wrapping up that 12-week program. This is where we will do end-to-end -end kind of demo, if you want to call it. We will have those two or three campaigns. We would have run those campaigns in a smaller customer segment. And we would have data to show. So this is, this is a 12 week program, as I said, that, that we, we, we have, and we can do it uh, as, as it's, it's a one program, one 12 week program, could be one team or multiple teams.